My name's James and we've made this in-depth video for you so you get more information when you're looking at buying a board from Red Paddle, what you get for that investment. So we're going to go and look at how the boards are made in comparison to the cheap and medium price boards. We're going to go and look what you get with the board. We're going to get a look at the stiffness. We're even going to go and have a look into the history a little bit of the paddle board market the last years. So join me here at Kayactive and we'll get started. So let's have a quick look at the history of paddle boarding in Sweden. Now, Kayaktiv has been in the industry now for 30 years. Paddle boarding has been in Sweden for 15 years, so we've been there from the start and we've seen how it's developed. Now, when we first started, you know, people laughed at us. This sport will never be anything and it gradually got more popular. And then the COVID period came along and then it absolutely exploded. And with that came a lot of competitors who sourced cheap boards from China, put a great amount of marketing and hype about how good their boards were, inflated the prices far more than what they're worth and gave a heavy discount just to make it look like a great bargain when you went and bought one. It definitely brought a lot of people into the sport, which we're super positive about, but we want to show here what the difference is and what you get when you buy a better board. Uh, quick word about Red Paddle, they are a company that are paddlers at heart, they're the ones that also enjoy seeing people out there paddling on the best products that they can produce. That pretty much sums them up as a brand. Now they a great thing that recently just happened, they just got B Corp certified. B Corp is a very, very stringent two-year process to be certified for sustainability. Now they don't just look if you plant a few trees or can recycle a product, they look at the whole picture from the factory to the staff, to the materials, to the social aspects. There's a very, very much more extensive look at it. Now there's only one other brand and that's Starboard that has that and you're up there with brands, for example, like Patagonia for sustainability. And that really shows you what this company is really about. Let's have a quick look how inflatable paddle boards are made. Now they're all made with drop stitch material, which is this material here in different grades of quality. That depends on how many strings, for example, that go up and down, the thickness of the strings, the angles of the strings. And then there's also the quality of the fabrics that they source, the EVA firm, and then also how they construct the seams, for example, if they just put a simple outside rail or if they have extra layers inside there, which helps hold the board more stable when you stand on it. So if the board can move like this, you're unstable. And if it's more fixed, obviously more stable. So Red Paddle use two different types of fabrics today. They have their standard MSL, laminated fabric for the majority of their boards. And then they also have the new compact material, which is actually made to be designed so that you can fold it half and roll it into a bag half the size. Now, their fabrics are registered to them. No one else can have access to MSL or pack material. And it's because they've put a lot of time into designing the different thread counts and the angles and other things in their fabric. So low cost brands, they're looking to keep the, the costs down. So they're looking for the cheapest mass produced materials on the market, quite often with less string count and not as stiff of materials. And it's again, it's what reflects in the price of what you pay. If you take a closer look at the boards from Red Paddle, you're going to see many, many different aspects of what makes them different. Everything from where the EVA foam comes out to the edges, for example, not just in the smallest area where you stand. They have different straps on the front. You're starting to see now that we have handles that you can start to take off and replace because quite often they're the parts that can be damaged for different reasons. And also take a good look at the fin boxes. There can be some very, very cheap mass produced fin boxes that, that work okay, but Red Paddle prefer to either use their proprietary iFin system, which is pretty indestructible, and you won't forget them because they're permanently glued on. And then they use FSC uh, fin boxes so that you can take the fins off and use a professional fin like you see on surfboards, which makes it universal. So if you lose your fin when you're in Hawaii, you can go and pick up a new fin and it's easy to replace. It takes 72 hours on average to assemble a red paddle board. So let's go back and look at those cheaper boards for two or 3,000 crowns. Now, they source out that to the cheapest producer in China and you have to think, well, what is that worker getting paid? Is it being built in the right conditions? And that has a big effect on the quality. Now let's talk about the different thicknesses that Red Paddle offer. There's 100 millimeter, 120 and 150. Now, 
Now, some brands that just want to basically mass produce boards, they'll buy just one size and produce everything that size quite often in 150 mil because it does give a bit more stiffness. But for a smaller pallet, you don't really need that. So for example, we have the 10O here that is 100 millimeter. So that suits a much smaller paddler and it's also better if you're gonna be up playing in the waves and surfing, it carves better. And then we have the 120 millimeter like on the popular 10.6 ride or the 11.3 sport, great touring board for, for, for people. And with that little extra stiffness there, it gives a bit more volume. So you have a more of a medium to a large paddler on those. And then we also have 150 mil thickness as well and that's used on the boards for larger people like myself for touring or on the racing boards so that you get more volume and you do get a little bit more extra stiffness particularly again for a larger paddler so with those three sizes you can get a much better optimized board for your use So what we want to do now is demonstrate with four different boards. We've got a low entry board from Bill Team for 2,000 crowns. And then we've got a nice medium price board to show you as well. And then we have both the ride board, which is our entry all around board. And then we have a Voyager to show you what the more high spec boards do. And that is how much they sink when me at 103 kilos stands on the board. So let's get started. So we'll just get Frida to come and mark it there. And then when I stand on the board, you can see it sinks quite considerably. So Frida marks that again. And we'll lift that up. So now we've changed over to a medium price board. So Frida, if you go and just mark the top there. Mark that again now. So now we've taken a red pedal ride 10.6. Now, to be honest, I'm a little bit too big. I should have a 10.8, but it's worth showing um, the difference here. So again, Frida, if you just mark that. Now, these boards, we've pumped them up to their recommended pressure. So that's 22 for the red paddle, uh, 22 for the medium price board, and 15 for the cheaper entry board there. So now we've taken out my favorite board, which is really suitable to me. It's 150 mil in thickness. Um, it's also got the RSS battens, which adds uh, extra stiffness. It's uh, two rails on each side to help it from, from bending down. So let's uh, have a look at that. Frida, if you just mark that one more time. And then come in and mark the difference there now. Thanks again. So we now have here yeah, for the Voyager and the Voyager was marked down to there. So what we'll do is we'll put these on a graph here and take a photo and add it into our video so that you can see the difference. Now you can see that the build team, it goes from here down to there. That's quite a big, big difference. And then the medium price board, it's pretty good. It goes from, from there to there. The, the 10.6, which is a little bit undersized for me, went from there to there. And then the Voyager moved barely four centimeters. So why is stiffness important? Well, if we take this as our board, when it's flat and hard on the surface, it goes faster. When it's bending, you're pushing against the water, so it's less effective. The other important point is that when a board is flat, there's more surface area on the water, making it more stable. And when it's bent, you've got a smaller surface area, making it unstable. When you're looking for a board, look at all the other little details. For example, Red Paddle have a wide range of innovations. They have their forward flex system on the Elite boards to keep the bow stiffer. They have twin fins on their Voyager series for extra core stability in open water. They have the rail stiffening system to keep a lot of their boards stiffer. The ride boards have permanently fixed fins so they can't be broken, can't be lost or forgotten when you go on holiday. So go and really take a look at all those little details. So let's also talk about what you get with your board, which is obviously you need the pump. 
Do you get a generic pump that everyone else has, or do you get a pump specifically designed to make life easier when you pump it up? Red Paddles Titan II pump, for example, has two chambers. You use both chambers to get the volume up, and then as you go into pressure, you exclude the biggest chamber. It's designed specifically for pedal boards. They also provide a telephone case for if you're out in the water and you need to call someone for, for safety. You get a, the most amazing backpack that you can use. It's got the wheels, it's got a carrying harness. You can exclude the bag and just carry the board on your back without the bag so if you're going to go and walk over a hill to a lake for example you don't need to take the whole bag with you and you get the repair kit as well but check out the paddle this is also an important factor if you buy a cheaper board they tend to come with aluminium paddles which are horrible to hold when it's cold and also they don't give you some and quite often they're too short for a lot of people as well so what they're trying to do they're trying to source in the cheapest products to give you the cheapest price again so that 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 makes it look like a better deal which is actually quite false and it's better to invest, like we say, in something a bit more substantial. So let's wind up this video. Now, first thing we want to point out, we believe there's a place in the market for everything from the low cost boards to the premium boards. We're not here to knock any brands. We're just here to show the difference what you get when you buy a premium board from Red Paddle, which includes a wide range of boards to suit the size of the paddler and the type of paddling that you want to do. And there's also a lot of focus on the details for the pump, the bag, the paddle, the leash that comes in a package. Now, Red Paddle also do a lot with their environmental issues. They work with B Corp that we talked about, and we also have great backup service from them, which we pass on. And so if you've got any questions about Red Paddle and their boards, contact us or one of our retailers here in Sweden, and we'll do our absolute best to help you. And we hope to see you on the water soon.